Let's learn some Torah. It's Parshat Vayigash. We've been learning it all week. We're getting ready for Shabbat. And sometimes in preparation for learning, I look back to the book that we created together over the first cycle of Torah that we shared, all the way from the, not the beginning of the Torah, we actually began in Parshat Vayakel, um, and then all the way around we made a siyum, a completion of the, the Torah. We've now done it almost three times. The first one we captured in a book called A Year of Torah, and in it there's a section from the Parsha that uh, I remember quoting, but I honestly don't remember this learning. Part of the reason for recording Torah lessons, and you can find the archive of everything we've ever broadcasted on um, UJA Federation of New York's Facebook page, where we are right now, um, but there is um, there's a lot to experience when you look back at time-based Torah. So, whereas we're in Parshat Vayigash, and I want to talk about the Parsha, I also want to talk about talking about the Parsha, and to remember what it was to find each other in those very early days, um, and what a gift it is to find each other now, to see that the world has continued moving forward, and it's not that we're out of the woods, and not that we'll ever actually be out of the woods, but there's something from each Parsha that manages to speak to each moment, no matter what moment we're in, no matter which Parsha we're up to. So, on December 24th, 2020, which was Parshat Vayigash two years ago, um, we, uh, we spoke about, I shared about a funeral that I had conducted in person, and it was the first time since the pandemic had begun that I'd done a funeral in person. And it was for a dear friend's mother. And there I was leading Kaddish in person and I heard the amens from physically assembled people. Yes, we were streaming so that people who could not attend were able to be present. But I remember hearing those amens at the same time and it struck me. Because recently then, and still now, I've been leading on Wednesdays uh, from MyJewishLearning.com, an online Kaddish minion from around the world where a hundred people every day for years now, not the same hundred people, in a cycle of mourning, of Avelut, come together and say Kaddish. And they're on mute until the Kaddish itself is recited and then we all begin. And it's a jumbling of noise because of the way Zoom works. I reflected two years ago on an article that was written in the New York Times called Why You Can't Meet God Over Zoom, about how spirituality was impossible online. And I remember reflecting with all of you, all of us, how wrong I think that opinion was, that finding God online is possible. Seeing the portal of our screens as also a nexus of the divine between us, that to find God in you and for you to see God in me, we can do this. And it is also true that being physically present is incomparable. So when we look at this week's Parsha and Jacob, who has been mourning the loss of his son Joseph for years, and now has risked the life of his young, new youngest son, as strange as that is to say, Benjamin, he has, according to interpretation, not the Torah itself, according to tr these interpretations, he has always known that Joseph was alive. Now, whether or not we believe that to be true in the story is a good question. But according to the interpretations, through the prophetic spirit, he saw that God was alive. Uh, he saw, well, I guess that might be true too, but he knew that Joseph was alive. There's a section about the reunion between Jacob and Joseph. Let me just read a translation in English here. They went up from Egypt and came to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. These are the brothers, having now understood that it was Joseph they were speaking to. And they told him, Joseph is still alive. Yes, he is ruler over the whole land of Egypt. Jacob's heart stopped, for he did not believe them. Right? It's unbelievable. But when they recounted all that Joseph had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to transport him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. Enough, said Israel. My son Joseph is still alive. I must go and see him before I die. Which means, according to the tradition, 
that says that Jacob always knew that Joseph was alive, even then the shock of hearing that he truly was alive meant that he had to get up and go be near. The proximity, which is the name of this week's Parsha, Vayigash, coming close to each other, is, is essential. And there are important steps in the process, which means his heart stopped, he felt the grief, it touched him. And he didn't hide from this intense feeling that just stopped his heart for the moment. And then his spirit was revived. That's very important to see those steps and to recognize, friends, for you and for me, for all of us, and probably every human being alive. We have been through something. And the revival is a necessary step in life. Grief comes and goes. It never leaves. It's a visitor that just says hello when it says hello. And here we are. Here we are with waves of grief that will come and go, but also with a spirit of revival from within us that it can awaken us, that can remind us what it is to be close. To start this new year with a desire to be near each other, it's not that you can't find God over Zoom. We have found the divine over and over, friends. 703 times we have found each other, and I hope that you've explored online other wonderful teachers and communities visited shuls from around the world, found incredible expressions of interfaith spirituality. I hope that you have continued exploring the world and your heart and your soul. This is what I wanted to share, not as a punchline, but as a very deep wisdom teaching that my wife Nishama taught me. It was a simple conversation that we had two years ago today that I recorded in this book. So this is what I wrote then. While discussing this together, my wife shared with me a dazzling insight that, yes, sometimes sadness is all there is, but it's not always all that there is. The author who thinks he cannot find God on Zoom is expressing his sadness, and everyone deserves the right to feel and say that. In those moments where sadness is all that I'm feeling, it is hard, but we acknowledge this in our tradition. We say, Mi ma'amakim kerati chaya. From the depths I call out to you, even in the depths I can call. And in calling out, I'm connected to something beyond myself. At the funeral that day, my wife sang her family's holy melody for Esa Enai. I lift up my eyes to the mountain. From where will my help come? The help begins with lifting up my eyes. When I begin to look up, I won't always have the strength to lift my eyes. But it's powerful, even when my head hangs low, to know that my sadness won't always be all there is. And in that knowledge, when I lift up my eyes in these moments, we have each other. Screen or shul, the call is real. So friends, what a gift it is to be a community on any platform, physical, virtual, there's nothing virtual about what you and I have shared for years. The voice that you share when you type your comments, when you share what's going on in your life, the support we show each other when we're going through hard things, and that has happened in the last day. I've watched when we share joy, new births, anniversaries, love, it is such a beautiful, powerful, holy thing to know that there is space for sadness. There must be because there is sadness and we are alive. And then we say we are alive, thank God. Because sometimes sadness is all there is and it is important to remember that it is not always all that there is. I learned that from my wife and I learned that from life and we learn that as we grow. But it is important to remember it and to remind each other of it. So friends, in the name of my teacher, my wife, and in the name of our gorgeous tradition, let's continue giving ourselves space to feel what we feel when we feel it, including sadness. And let us be brave in those moments and hear a quiet reminder in the back of our souls saying, yes, I know, that's hard. And that's not all there will be, my friend. 
That's not all there will be, my body. That's not all there is in life. There is joy. There is love. There is hope. There is peace. And in this new year, friends, I want to bless you and me and everybody that we should continue to give space to our feelings when they come, because they will. And we should hold in the core of ourselves one light. Like the message of Hanukkah, one light is enough. We're not satisfied with it. We are mahadrin, min ha-mahadrin. We decide that more beauty is better. More beauty is deserved. We are worthy of more light. And it begins with one spark of the divine from within you that you offer even and especially in the dark moments. This community for 703 mornings so far has been a source of light for me and I hope for you. Let's go into the Shabbos with the desire to be close to each other, with hope, with light, with love. Let's get ready for a new year that is better than the one that we are saying goodbye to. We deserve a better year and we can make it better by holding on to that light and sharing it freely. Here we go. Now let's do a little bit more jumpy one, getting ready for Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Happy New Year. See you soon.